This is the Smart for Two ED prototype. It's not the model that's going to be launched later this year. This is the earlier Smart with the Zytec battery in it, which is not the one that's going to be in the production model. The production models are going to use batteries that are made in conjunction with Tesla. Yes, the people who made that famous sports car. This is just one of 200 Zytec built Smart ED prototypes based on the 2006 Smart for Two. If you wanted to take part in their test scheme, you had to have a huge wad of cash and be willing to part with a test car after three years. You hear nothing in the Smart ED. When you pull away, you're thrown back in your seat, like this. Whoa. This particular Smart was not designed to be a motorway car. However, I'm going to take it on the motorway because any car, in my opinion, should be capable of motorway travel. Okay, I'm doing 60 on the motorway, but I do feel quite vulnerable in this little car. Very vulnerable. Okay, so the new Smart for 2 ED is going to have a higher top speed of about 70, but it doesn't stop you from feeling vulnerable on the freeway. I've got someone bearing down on me in a Mercedes truck. It's scary. The new Smart is not going to win any prizes when it comes to speed. However, all those batteries down low give the Smart ED an advantage over its petrol counterpart feels much more sturdy in the wind and I think it's because of the weight of the battery is which is you know good really and the good news doesn't stop there there's one thing that you will never need an electric car and that's petrol bye bye petrol station hello motorway so how does an electric car work well an electric car works by taking power from batteries, sending it through a motor, which converts that electrical power into mechanical energy, pushing you along. It's as simple as that. No burning dead animals, which is what a regular car does. Time to stop tooling around on the freeway and put the smart ED where it's happiest, in the urban jungle. So I've had about one hour off for lunch and I charged the car. When I pulled up, the car said it had 20% uh, remaining. It's now got a shade over 38%. So expect a recharge, a full recharge to take about eight hours, which is what Mercedes are saying is the case. This car has hill assist, like any other smart car, which means that when you take your foot off the brake, it still keeps the brakes on for a little tiny amount of time enabling you to put your foot on the accelerator. I actually feel more confident pulling away in this than I do in my diesel smart because it has more torque, has more power from standstill. There's just that moment when you put your foot down and you think, what's going on? And then it kicks back. This is how a smart car should have been from the word go. They should have never been petrol. They should have been electric. This is where the smart is a best at home, in town. And for a city like Milton Keynes, I could drive this smart in Milton Keynes all day. It's quiet, it's economical to run, and it's electric, which means I'm not burning any fossil fuels. And if I charge it from renewable sources such as wind or solar, then very, 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 very low carbon emission. So no good on a motorway? But what's the real verdict of this little city runabout? So in conclusion, the Smart ED is a great vehicle for round town. It's clean, it's green, it's got awesome acceleration to uh, you know, 30 miles an hour, 40, 50. It starts to get a little bit slow. Anything above 60, you're pushing your luck. 
It can go on the motorway, as I've illustrated, but I can't wait to try the new Smart ED, the one that everyone's gonna get a chance to try later on this year, because this is a prototype, and I know they've changed the battery, and I know they've changed the motor, so I'd like to have a go on that new Smart. Maybe I will.